We're live. We are. Should we start the show? Yeah, we should. All right, the show is starting. Here we go. Here we go. Should be interesting talking this about this gonna movie. This is going to be fun. Are you sure? <laughs> fun for me. It's always fun. It's fun for me, too, you know. I think our show's damn fun. It is fun. It's pretty fun, right? Especially by the end of it. Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Sommelier of Cinema, and of course, your Existential Mr. Rogers, Robert Meyer Burnett. And I'm here with my lovely co-host... Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. And Elizabeth, what is this show? This is Elizabeth Hughes, Whining About Movies. Whining About Movies. Yeah. And we can't whine about movies... Without until we have some wine. wine. And this is going to be a pretty interesting show, don't you think? Very interesting. I think it's going to be interesting. Well, <laughs> uh, first of all, why don't I pour you up a glass of wine? Okay. And uh, let's make sure, you know, you hold that up. And uh, we'll make sure that, you know, I, I'm pouring, you know, as, as the bartender that I am. I'm trying to get these uh, pretty close together, right? Those are pretty close, would you say? Yeah. Not bad, right? Pretty good. Not bad. No pretty measuring good. cups here. <laughs> So before we get into it, I think it's time to tell the folks at home what we're drinking. Uh, once again, we got this from Naked Wines. They do not sponsor this show, although they should. Uh, what is this one? It, this is it's a Zinfandel, but it's a Bajias. First of all, let's show you I the. Didn't look at it. Here's the label. Ba ba I can't, you know I don't know. It's a Zinfandel, and you know Zinfandel not necessarily my favorite wine. Not mine either. So why <clears throat> did you choose this wine, Elizabeth? Well, we had several to choose from, and we did. the reason I chose this one tonight is mm. I looked at the alcohol content of each wine, and this is the one with the most. Wow. So, uh, well, there you go. And uh, I think let's, first of all, let's cheers to this. Uh, cheers. Hmm. It's tasty. Oh, it's not bad. Not bad. Well, I think wine is the way to start for our movie. This is the uh, 2013 Italian film, The Great Beauty. This is the Criterion Blu-ray, which I dare say is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. This won an Academy Award at the 86th Academy Awards. It came out in 2013. It's directed by Paolo Sarantino. For those of you who, if you don't know, Paolo Sarantino, he has done the TV shows The Young Pope and The New Pope that are on HBO. That's where you might have heard him. I think I first encountered his work in El Divo, which is another Italian film that I own. And uh, I think he's got an incredible eye. The Great <clears throat> Beauty is one of the most stunningly beautiful films uh, I, can, I can imagine. It also has... An incredible sound mix. Uh, there's an opening party scene that just the, the sound mix is, is incredible. But I, I chose this movie for Elizabeth to see. You hadn't seen it, right? No. You didn't see it. Well, to me, it's it, it's very much sort of linked to our last film, Fellini's La Dolce Vita, which came out in 1960. This film came out in 2013. But it is still, like La Dolce Vita, set in Rome... And it tells the story of a man named Jep, 65-year-old man who... The movie opens at this incredible party. And it's there's thumping techno. But there's one thing that you notice about the partygoers. They're all middle-aged and older. At a party like this, you'd think it's on Ibiza. You know, there's young people undulating. But not in this movie. This movie is about middle-aged people. And Paolo... Uh, uh, Sorrentino has talked about all of his movies are about older people that he as a director is fascinated by middle age and uh, it has to probably do with the fact I believe he lost his parents when he was younger so he didn't have a father figure growing up so he's been fascinated with that aspect and this character of Jep everyone knows him he's like the king of Rome nightlife and he explains in the film that not only when he came to Rome as a younger man, not only did he want to be, not only did he want to be the center of, of nightlife in Rome, he wanted to be the king of it. Like he wanted to be the guy, the party dude. The, 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 he, could, he would know everybody, he could go everywhere, and he succeeded. 
He is that party guy. He knows everyone and everything. Doesn't matter who it is. But he's not happy. He once wrote a very well-regarded novel like 30 years ago. He keeps harking back to this this relationship he had with this woman. Um, and he, he's just... He's feeling an overall sense of ennui. One of my favorite words. Now, Elizabeth, now that the stage is set, what did you think <laughs> of this movie? Well, it was interesting to watch them back to back. <clears throat> the Dolce Vita and this film. I feel like it's a remake of that movie. Um Really? Yeah, totally a remake of that movie. and Maybe inspired by. It's not really well, a remake. I mean, the story's the same. It's, it's not... the same. It's the same story. He's even a writer, so it's basically the same story. But this film, unlike La Dolce Vita, is pretentious on top of it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Very pretentious. And the well, main wait, character... Wait, wait, wait. Why did you feel it was pretentious? Because, I mean, okay, the scenery is beautiful. And the opening scene, there's the opening scene with the music and the singing, like there's a choral uh, group singing from the Trevi Fountain. And it's haunting and it's beautiful. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be such a wonderful film. Um, and, then, and then even the next scene when it's his birthday party and they're dancing and it's like uh, club music. It was like really, <laughs> yeah, it was very, very cool scene. Okay. And I liked seeing older people. And by the way, the, the subwoofer party. was thumping, was it not? It was thumping. It, it was, was awesome. Thumping. So yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be cool. And then as it goes on, it's all about this guy who is unhappy with his lifestyle because it's so shallow and he hangs out with these rich, shallow people and he gets tired of it. Well, he does have his friend who difference... wants to be a playwright who's like living in student housing. Okay, that's the one only character. And he's actually the only character I liked. <laughs> Come on. I love Jep. Uh, uh, With his beautiful I... linen suits and his demeanor. And he had the great... The, Jep has like the greatest apartment ever. It's got this, it's this modern apartment on the inside, but on the outside he's got this deck... And it overlooks the Colosseum in Rome. I mean, and that's where they have lots of parties and salons and they're fabulous and everybody yeah, comes and over. They all hang out. All these rich people, shallow, very shallow that people. That apparently do nothing. They do nothing except go to Botox clinics and they all go together and they hang out there like it's, you know, Which no is also like a party. Everyone's getting Botox. It's like, like a Botox party. Yeah. Which is a really surreal... And there's this doctor and everybody, even the nun. There's a nun at this Botox party. Yeah, very weird. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Keep going. Um, I found everyone shallow, everyone snobby, and and just not likable. Just not likable. <laughs> but you didn't. Plus, the main character doesn't even like change during the movie. He's just he's the same person going in as he is going out. But don't you think that we're meeting him at a moment in time when he's like, you know, people keep talking about him. He, he wonders if he's ever going to have anything to write about. I mean, what's really interesting is this is the third movie now. Betty Blue, Zorg, wanted to be a writer. He had written something, but he hadn't sold it yet. And then, of course, Marcello Mastrioni in, um, in La Dolce Vita, he was a paparazzi. He wrote the Society columns, but he also wanted to be a, 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 a man of letters. He wanted to write a novel. Right. And so now the same movie where we have Jep is this character. He wrote a novel 40 years ago. 40 years ago that's well regarded and people like it. Even even this this woman who's the 104 year old nun who's a saint had read his book. And and so he'd done something. He was a, he was an accomplished artist. You didn't you didn't 40 years ago and then he did nothing with his life except I relate to that. except party and do nothing. Well, I mean you know, it, it, okay, but 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 still, I mean, as an artist, as somebody who's who's yearning and searching, and like he did do what he wanted to do, which was become the king of Rome nightlife. I mean, he even knows a guy. He yeah, knows but a guy. Then he shouldn't be complaining about it. Like one minute he's saying, "Oh, we are the best, um, the best train uh, dance." What is that when you do the? Well, it wasn't the Macarena. It was like the Italian version of the Macarena. No, 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 it wasn't when the, when you do a train. 
Oh, conga line. A conga line. He's like, oh, we have the best conga line in Rome to his friend. And then like five minutes later. But, but no, no. He says something amazing. He says, we have the best conga line in Rome that goes nowhere. That yeah. was. I mean, I thought that nowhere. was. I love that. I mean, you know, you're going to conga into eternity <clears throat> and get nowhere. I thought that was great. This movie is full of these just chestnuts. I mean, all the that woman, the pretentious, she's like, I'm 55 years old now, and she used to write for this <laughs> communist newsletter, and Jep, Jep just tells it like it is. He yeah. never lets, he doesn't let any of his friends have the illusion of, of how awesome they are. He's like, oh, you only wrote for the communist newspaper because you wanted to date that guy. Okay, yeah, but then he's also not very sensitive either, because when his friend tells him that her son is losing his mind, and... Uh, tries to talk to him about it. He's like, oh, has he seen a psychiatrist? And then he starts talking about his food. He didn't care. Well, but, but he knows. I mean, he's also a pragmatist. He knows that this guy, there's no way to help him. It's like you can, you can, be, you can spend the rest of your life trying to serve your sick, mentally ill son. But where is it going to get you? And where does it get her? Well, she wasn't a very nice person either. She was also very shallow. Well, it's like all of his friends were, were sort of <laughs> yeah. shallow. But isn't that kind of, I mean, what he's, isn't and, what... And another thing, this this movie was three hours long. What's wrong with that? Just like La Dolce Vita. It's the same story, same length. Well, I, I without the... Surreal... And I liked La Dolce Vita better. See, I, I just, I, I mean, look, I, I guess I identified with Jep and his, his, his... Oh really? You hang out with rich people and wear linen suits and well, I never dance wore linen. I, I, no, but I want to wear linen suits and I want to <laughs> dance on rooftops and I would love to hang out with rich. I've hung out with rich people before. You know, I also had money to burn at one point in my life. Where you just you party and one day turns into the next and and go, it, go to to Botox you, parties. I and... never went to a Botox party, you, but you feel like being fabulous is an end is a is a, is an end in itself. You know, when you're having a fabulous time and. You, Except you, the, all those people are unhappy. They're unhappy. Well, yes, they are unhappy because they 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 all want to accomplish something, but they're not. They're not. Of course, they're not, because all they do is sit around. And apparently, they're all wealthy. But when you're wealthy, except the only person that was striving to do something was his friend living in student housing that was his same age. Right, who was not rich. Right, he was not rich, but he was trying to do something. He was writing, and he was he actually ends up putting yeah. on a monologue that ends up being really well regarded He's at the, the end. He's the best character in the movie. But then at the end, when, when he says, I'm leaving, I've been in Rome for 30 yeah, years. like, I'm going home. I'm going here. Rome is a disappointment. He had yeah. all these hopes and dreams. I thought this whole movie was, I, I, I it, it's all about being, like, to me, I'm like, this could be like being a filmmaker in L.A., you know, a, a wannabe filmmaker. I mean, I made a movie 20 years ago. I was like, I feel like Jep. I just don't dress as well as he does you know and and like everyone's like you should make another movie i'm like yes i should well no you're different than jeb because you actually do want to make another movie he didn't want to write another book no he didn't want he to write want another to do book. anything he just wanted to be the party king no he he what he wanted to be the party king and he accomplished that that was the thing he accomplished it he was the party king yeah that was his goal not and to write another it. book he achieved it though okay and, but that's when that's when he realizes i'm like every i'm like he achieved this goal and he did it, you know, just like he wrote a book. And now at 65, he... he's thinking, why the hell was that my goal to be? The yeah, party he is. King? And he goes back because he gives he... up the love of his life to be the party king. Well, and he doesn't know. Doesn't even think about it until she dies. And well, he, well, the husband, the, 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 hus the, the woman's husband is the one that comes to him and says, she was in love with you, not with me. Yeah, I was just a good companion. I was a good. Remember, he yeah. says, "I was just a good companion for her because he reads her diary," and 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 then he 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 goes back a second time and asks him if she wrote anything. Can I read the diary? And he's like, yeah. "Well, you could read the diary, but I threw it away." Yeah, I'm glad. But that's what like, he, he, he wants. He wants this. Get. He wants this reaffirmation from the past, like that would do something for him, oh, and it doesn't that do anything. No, it doesn't do it. No, I, I'm smart enough to know that you might want things. The past doesn't exist. The past is a myth. Like, what, what about the scenes? Like, like, like. I love that he would look up at his ceiling. Yeah. And and he would look up the ceiling. And in a way, I guess it is kind of like La Dolce Vita because when he look at the ceiling, he would see the sea. Right. And he saw the sea in his ceiling, and then he like, would fantasize about 
that that day when he made love to this woman and he was in the water and he was a young man and virile and and yeah. and you didn't find that sort of poetic and and sort of like like we all yearn for the past and we think ooh the past if i could only get back there it'd be better but it's an illusion too you can never get back there and it was never as good as you thought it was well that's true well, I mean, that's true, but I feel no sympathy for him. He's not a good person. I don't like him. And so for him to be and, and anyway, he's reminiscing about this girl that he didn't continue having a relationship with and really didn't think about her very much, except for these fantasies every once in a while. I probably until, did. Until the husband was like, oh, she was she was in love with you. And then he's like, oh, well, and that just fueled his fantasy. You know, by hearing yeah. that, he just, uh, uh, yeah. But but I don't think he was sad or anything. I think he was. I think he was melancholy and sad about everything. Yeah, because his life didn't amount to anything. But but what's interesting is he's surrounded by the, the beauty of Rome. Like, everywhere he goes. What about the guy? He knows this dude who has, he carry this guy, this handsome, like, man, carries around a suitcase with just keys. And the guy has keys to every important building or museum in Rome. That's all, and it's, he's kind of this awesome fantasy character. You know, he's like the key, the 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 guy in the Matrix Reloaded, the the key, the master, key master. You know, who can open it. He was this guy, but it was real. And and they go into these places, and 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 he could see the most incredible beauty that surrounds him everywhere he goes. And it's almost like. He knows all these people, and he can be fabulous. There's something you said for that, isn't there? I mean, no. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares if he's fabulous? Well, he did. He, like you said, he wanted to be the king. All right. Well, he succeeded. So okay. Well, so let me ask you this. Don't complain. Let me ask you this. In the movie, he goes and visits a friend of his that runs a very high-end strip club. Mm-hmm. And he finds out, he meets his friend, and they reminisce about the old times, and he's become the king of Rome, but his friend is still, he doesn't even, like, he used to own the strip club, but now he doesn't, now he just yeah. runs it. <clears throat> and you find out his, like, 40-year-old 42 42 year daughter. Year daughter is stripping, and apparently she makes all the money, and she spends all of her money, and the father doesn't know where. Right. And, and, and he just wants her to get married. Yeah, he just wants her to get married, and then Jep goes and befriends her. Right, and she's well, like, she keeps thinking he wants to sleep with her. Right, uh, well, maybe he does, but then, and but he then, eventually does. But then they become, they become friends. Like they go around together, and yeah. like he takes her to his. Par he throws these awesome parties at his house, and she goes with him. And people look down on his friends, like, oh, who is that who's, floozy? Who's she? Yeah, even though she is very beautiful. I, I liked that character too. But I liked what, her, uh, and I but, liked the poor. But guy. talk about what happens to that woman. <laughs> What happened to her? Well, she dies, and I don't even know how. Well, it was a little. She dies because. Well, what she says is, the mystery is, what does she spend all of her money on? Oh, medical. Treatments? And she says medical treatments, and then there's an interesting scene where it, she, you think she's died, and then she wakes up, but she really did die. She really did die. She really did I die. I thought that was an interesting. I liked that part where she was. You think she's dead. And then a few seconds later, she does open her eyes and say something. But I think that's his imagination. It like, is his imagination. He wanted her to wake up. And I liked how that was depicted. I thought that was kind of cool. But they, <clears throat> I, I don't know if they ever actually had sex because she says it's nice. Remember, they had the conversation. It's it's right, nice to um, be here. Like, they spend the night together. Yeah. But they don't sleep that's true. together. That's true. And then she passes away. Yeah. Because she was either, you don't know what she's got, whether it's cancer or terminal, but she was... Spending right. all her money. I think what I the way I took it is she was stripping as an affirmation. At, even at 42, she was beautiful and she was desirable, even though she knew she was suffering from a terminal disease. And it was her way to sort of rage, rage against the dying of the light, you know? I liked her. I thought she was a great character. I thought she was a great She's character, the, too. Her and the other guy are the only ones who had any depth. Well, and they, tell us about the other guy. Who was that guy? Like, the, his friend. Yeah, his friend that wanted to be a playwright, he, wanted to... Yeah, he was trying to write a play, and then he's, like, always hanging out with this former actress who wants that to he be was a madly, writer. That he was madly in love and with her. she's 
terrible. She was terrible. She's terrible. And she was a real see you next Tuesday. Oh, man. And she kept saying, you know, we're not together. But then she would use him to, like, take her to the airport. And I mean, there was a great just... moment. Like, like uh, uh, he, he says to her at once, he drives her home. And she goes, I need you to pick me up and take me to the airport in three hours. He's like, I live on the other side of the city. He's like, can I just crash on your couch and, and then like, take you? No. She's like, no. I want to pack alone. He sleeps in his car in front of her apartment. <laughs> oh, I was like, that's so pathetic. <laughs> I still liked him, though. I liked him, too. But then it was when he says Rome is a disappointment. He'd been there for 30 yeah. years. And after he'd done, he'd, he put on this monologue and it was well received. Yeah. And... Yeah. How come that didn't continue? I don't remember. Well, because it's not enough. It's not enough just to put on a... How are you doing with the... Uh... Oh. Uh, let's let's keep... Make sure, because I want to make sure you're always going, I don't know, man. What do you think about that? <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Why don't we just kill the bottle? Yeah, let's kill it. Got to make it last, though. There we go. Those are nice <clears throat> pours. Remember, two glasses of wine each. Two That's each. for our bottoms up scale. So, okay. So, obviously, first of all, you got to admit the cinematography in this film is unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And the people are beautiful, most of them. And um, the music is fantastic. But they do things, there's so many interesting things like the communist lady who's yeah. always going head to head yeah. with, with Jep. There's this great scene where where you see her at home, and she's she's swimming laps in this beautiful pool outside. Right. And then she goes into her fabulous house, and she finds her husband. Yeah. Inside, in their lap pool. In their infinity pool. In their inf and he's swimming and doing laps against the jet, while yeah. she's been outside in the nude, swimming, and and even though she's 54, she's still this beautiful Italian woman. And yet, uh, uh, and, and there's an indoor pool and an outdoor and, uh, and, pool. And you realize that even her, who's supposed to be fabulous, and she has done all this stuff to be with this guy, and Jep totally criticizes her, and 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 yet you realize her life kind of blows too. Yeah, I mean they're all lonely and and I don't know, it's not something desirable to live like that. But don't you think that that was like. I mean, we live in L.A., there's there's Beverly Hills, you know, there's great wealth, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of jockeying for position, the social order, that even though they're all unhappy, <clears throat> they're still trying to be a part of this lifestyle, and they're still, they still want position. It's like it's a race. Yeah. Who's the coolest person in Rome? Right. I who's mean, gonna Jeff is. Who's going to throw the best party, and who's going to... And who's going to have the best people? Yeah, and get the most Botox. Well, okay, so at one point in the film... Uh, a saint is coming. Yeah. A saint, this hundred and four year old so weird. nun who's coming and and she's read Jep's book. Right. And apparently she wants to have everybody wants to get an audience with her. Right. But what she wants is to come to Jep's home. Now, Jep's best friend is this dwarf woman who's a his like publisher, his writer. Right. And she's a spitfire and a firecracker and everyone loves her. But she knows she's a dwarf. She's a little person. But she right. calls her... I say dwarf because in the movie that's what she calls herself. That's fine. So her... Well, a lot of people, you know... No, uh, that's not offensive. Just uh, I just want to use the right terminology. Yeah. So what What did you What did you think of their relationship and the whole uh, thing with the, uh, with the saint? What did that mean to you? What did you think about that? I equated that to him trying to remake the scene of the children seeing the mother uh, Mary in La Dolce Vita. Ooh! Cheers to you! Wow, okay. Of... Please, please uh, elucidate. Please uh, uh, please extrapolate upon well, this idea. he's totally remaking this movie. He's totally remaking La Dolce Vita. Ooh, you know what? I, I didn't consider this, but please continue. So, of course, he had to have some kind of religious something. And so he has this Mother Teresa type person um, in his home. I don't remember why she stays at his house. Well, they're oh, they're at a gonna dinner. He's going to interview her. He's, he's going to yeah. He's going to his 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 best friend, his publisher, has 
arranged for this interview yeah. to happen. And at the dinner where it's supposed to happen, they're like, oh, she doesn't talk. Like her handler, who you realize is just another social climber and uses this saint mm -hmm. to get in. Like he's like, you have to find royalty to come <clears throat> sit with us. And they find this this count and countess who are, are like royalty for hire. <laughs> And then they impersonate another royal See, couple. See, it's just as silly as like the scene of the the children seeing the mother Mary in the tree, and then it was over there, and then she was over here. Yeah, but she's she really was... a saint, though. In, in that case, it was like their parents. Yeah, but were... come on, he made her look really weird. Well, yeah, Almost she looked comical. Looked, she looked well. She looked like uh, like an alien, like a. Yeah, because they they put some like kind of. How do you know that she, wasn't her for real? You no, don't want to make fun of the actress. No, no, no. Uh, there's right. no way, okay. no way. They put some kind of tooth thing, like a. But and you think she's being manipulated the whole time, and you wonder what she, is she really a saint? But then what happens? She surprises us. I don't remember. Well, she she actually does pipe up when they go back to Jep's house, uh -huh. or when they're there, whenever people have left, she pipes up and she says, "I did read your book." Right. And she was not lying about that. And and they do have a conversation, not much. I mean, but, she doesn't say much. No, she doesn't say much, but, you know, you realize that, that she probably really was a saint, but she's also being used to be fabulous by everybody around her. Right, right. And then there's a scene where she's climbing up this humongous staircase on well, her hands and knees. That was proving that she really is a saint, and she's going up to this... The, like the pulpit or the... I mean, she really was a saint. That was the whole I thing. I don't know. That whole scene was so weird. Very weird. <laughs> so, okay, but okay. Okay, now, 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 uh, now you tell me your your side of uh, how you, well, what this you is think not, of this. It, look. Because I, I know you really like this film. I really like this movie a lot. I you want to be Jet. Well, I, it's not yeah, that I, you, you want to be Jep. It's not that I want to be Jep. I I identify with Jep. I understand. Look, I get it. You know, I I I get the idea that you made something a while ago. And and look, it's not like my movie set the world on fire. But I wanted to be a filmmaker. And while I you know been toiling away at the indie world, it would be nice to be a rich, fabulous person with an amazing apartment that overlooks the Coliseum. You know, and you can be that. And wear these beautiful again. I'm. Yeah, I'm, but would you, if you had that, would you give up making films? No. No. See, no. He gave up writing. No, he did give up writing to be fabulous. I mean, I learned that you. I. 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 I learned that that doesn't. You know, I would have rather. And I. That's why I've done what I. I mean, is that your end goal? To be fabulous, as opposed to no, making films. No, my end goal would be to leave an oeuvre of movies. Like if I could make five right. movies, I've made one. I mean, I've produced. So then you really or, but, don't want to be like Jeff. No, I don't want to be like Jep, but I identify with Jep. I understand, like, I, I look, I don't necessarily get, I don't know what it's like to have that amazing apartment. He must have family money. Apparently, everyone in Europe has family money. No, like, I that's don't understand. not realistic. I don't understand, <clears throat> like, I've never had that, I, I you know. <clears throat> I'm I, starting I, to think, like, two Italian films in a row now, are all Italians, like, shallow and rich and... No, no. I, I don't think, Je but I don't think they're shallow, they're... They're arguing politics and everything, and and they they, I, I don't think they're shallow. I think that they have not, they have not embraced the great beauty of life. That's why the movie's called that. I mean, the funny thing is, is all of this beauty. They're in Rome, right? I mean, they're in Rome. They're surrounded by. They didn't go into the Trevi Fountain, but all of this, they have a guy that has keys to get him into the most beautiful museums and beautiful places in the whole city. You know, they, they, they're they surrounded by this, and yet they're all, I don't know, dissatisfied with their own yeah. life. I mean, they're they're all seeking <clears throat> the great beauty, and perhaps it surrounds, it surrounds them. Well, I think they're looking them. in the wrong place. Well, maybe that's the point of the film. They're looking in the wrong like place. They're surrounded by beauty, and yet they can't obtain it because... Or they're looking at the wrong beauty. They're, yes. I mean, it's like that the, the that one guy who just wants to write a great play, and he's going after this actress that is just the blackest of hearts. The oh, most she's super, awful. Just awful. Awful. Just, uh, you, 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 yes. 
And yet he's smitten. He's completely enamored, yeah. being dragged around. It's sad. It is sad. But now, did you think this whole movie was sad? No, this movie was pretentious. But why, when you say pretentious, I don't, I don't think it was pretentious. It was. I, I don't feel it yeah, was pretentious. I, I feel it is pretentious. It's all about, um, it's about. The scenery, he really wanted to film Rome and make it look beautiful, which he did. It's beautifully shot. Oh, my God. Um, so beautiful. He shot. wanted to show rich, beautiful people, which he did. Um, and there was really no depth to these characters. Like, even Jep doesn't change at all from the beginning to the end. Like, okay, he's not satisfied, but you really don't see that very much. And then he doesn't really change. Well, I, I think in a way, you don't... Look, it, it it might not be as apparent as, say, an American film. Uh, but you don't think the in this entire experience... Like, even... Look, I look, would never compare this to an American film. But what about, the, what about the moment, like, the pretentious communist woman, and they have this back and forth, they actually go at each other, and at the end, they dance together at that wedding. Yeah. And and you know he says, "Have we ever slept together?" You know, and it's of like, of course he says that. Yeah, but they don't even know. They don't even know. And if she's like, yeah, "No, and that, that doesn't gross but, you but, out." They don't even know. Like that doesn't make you feel like what? Thirty years in Italy. <clears throat> Come on, it's it's a land of uh, the love. There, you never know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't but, know. I, there's no deep, rich relationships. There's no nobody has a relationship because they don't know how. All they do is party and, and sleep around and dance and drink. And how, how do these people make money? Like, they just have money. Well, yeah, that's because they inherited it. The old money, Europe old money. I don't know. I've never been an old moneyed European person. Although, boy, wouldn't it be fun, though? I mean, I would like to have money. Uh, it'd just be old. Like, who wouldn't want it? Here's the thing. The idea of being the the king of nightlife in Rome is an irresistible proposition. For you, maybe. Don't you think it would be fantastic to be that guy? No. No. For 30 years. He's not years. happy. That's what the whole film is about. He's not happy. I understand, but, you know, for a while he was. Not really. I mean, he was a, he was a novelist. Everyone liked his book. And then he got to be the king of Rome nightlife. But he's not happy about it. I don't know why he would want that. Well, for a while, it could be, a, it could be, a, it could be. Fu- I mean, come on, you're in Rome. You're f- fabulous parties, beautiful. I mean, you can people. go to parties and have you, you fun. You have a man that but shows up. But you pursue up. your dreams. Like you keep making films. I keep making art. Well, yet yeah. Go to parties. That's something different. Yes, I think. But it, when, I, when I, it's I, your ultimate goal to be the king of parties, like that's pretty sad. The king of nightlife. Okay, same diff. I mean, he knew a man that... Ha- this is what... Uh, yes. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Well, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I can put on my glasses. People are sending us in questions. We first... We have a letter. Uh, we have to l- uh, read a letter. We don't have to. We love getting letters. <laughs> um, so, this letter... It's a short one, but it is from Imagination Connoisseur <clears throat> Stephen Goggin, who's been writing letters to the, the channel. Raw observations, certainly. I believe this is Stephen's... First letter to Elizabeth Hughes. Here's let's cheers to Stephen. Cheers to you, sir. Dear Robin Liz, thank you for your excellent shows and telling us about movies I know nothing about <laughs> and will take time to watch them. Just a short letter of some movies from Ireland for Elizabeth Hughes. Mm. The Quiet Man. Ooh, that's a good one. The Field, another good one. The The Dead Bloom. I don't know that. The Commitments, fantastic. Rattle and Hum which is a documentary. I saw that opening night at the Fox Theater in Westwood. Uh, Excalibur. Oh, my God. I love Excalibur, which I, of course, own. Zardoz. your I favorite. love Zardoz. I know. I showed you that. <laughs> and Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon. Oh, I love Barry Lyndon. One of my favorite movies. So good. Live Long and Prosper. Stephen G., the Irishman in Somerset. Well, awesome. Stephen G., thank you for that letter. Thank you. Great suggestions. I think The Quiet Man would be a great choice for this show. Perhaps mm-hmm. we will do that. I mean, you've seen Zardoz, although Zardoz would be kind of fun to do. It would be fun to do. I'm hoping that uh, the people's choice will be Zardoz. Really? Is that part of the people's choice? 
I somebody mentioned it. I don't know if it's on the poll or not. Oh, now you've already you've mentioned it. I Richard, think you. Richard, I think I, I somebody has, keeps mentioning it. There's one person that is like obsessed with it and keeps mentioning it. Well, I you know we I love Zardoz. I mean, I've got I've got a Zardoz head right up there. I love the, Zardoz too. Yeah. So. <laughs> what a weird movie. <laughs> well, I, uh, well, yeah, but it's a it's a great movie. Uh, hang on, there's people that have been firing in some questions here. Let's go. Let's let's go to the questions. Uh, remember, we look up that way if you want to. So, a spectator <clears throat> sends in two. Uh, hey, Rob, update from my last Streamlab tip about feeling early Corona symptoms. I feel better. Oh. I've slightly slightly regained my taste and my smell is almost back. Oh. Just have to hold stuff close to my nose to smell. It's very bizarre. Wow, that's wow. wild. I guess I was lucky because the suffering was minimal at best. Thank you both for the fun and laughter each week. Well, a spectator, wow. we drink to you and your good health. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yes. Mm. <coughs> Mukbang Review sends in a super chat and says, <clears throat> I'm having a Merlot. <laughs> yes. Rome is a beautiful city. Your yes. commentary compliments the film. Well, I'm glad. I hope we're not slamming it too hard because I really, <laughs> I really liked it. Uh, Claudius sends in, uh oh, uh, La Dolce Vita and The Gran Belizia, or The Great Beauty, are films about chaos, decay, and decadence that indict the superficial and wasteful. La Gran Belizia's party scene is outrageous but very real. During the chaos, each member of Jep's circle is artfully detailed. Hell yes, it is! I think so. Uh, Claudius goes on to say, In La Dolce Vita, religion is just another pursuit like fame and wealth. In La Gran Belizia, the clergy may be a part of the party, but the characterization of Sister Maria's devotion is not ironic. Sister Maria offers a view. Roots are important. See? I do See, remember her that. saying that. Roots are important. But that's the only thing she says. Yeah, well, it, but that's not the only thing she says. Basically. All right, well, okay, Kaz Graphics sent a very nice super chat. Thank you, Kaz Graphics. <clears throat> Hello, I'm late to the party. Well, according to the grand, uh, the great beauty, no one's ever late to the party as long as you get to the party. <laughs> uh, you have to be fabulous, though. Hello, I'm late to the party, but thanks for the great content and most conver most of conversation for us viewers. Well, Kaz Graphics, we, we cheers to that. Cheers to, cheers to Kaz. <laughs> uh, these are fun shows, like... I didn't know how this was going to go. Super fun. I didn't know if you liked it. You, you've gotten better and better. You've having more and more fun. Yeah, this is really fun. It's good. People, it's yep. fun. I like, and it's fun to show <laughs> these movies to you. And it's, yes. it's good. We're having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are. yeah. Having a good time. And, uh, you know, what's a beautiful lady, some great wine, great movies. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't. This film, by the way, this is a fantastic Blu-ray, and The Great Beauty did win Best Foreign Film at the Oscars in the the, the the 86th Academy Awards. It's not like this is some slouchy movie. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful, that's for sure. Yeah. The like music you, is like good. Like you, babe. Like you. Aw, okay. thank you. Uh, Mukbang Reviews sends in a super chat and says, This film is gorgeous. I rented it and I'm playing it while listening to you speak. P.S. <laughs> thanks for helping John today. You guys did great work for a great cause. Mukbang, thanks for pointing that out. John raised over $12,000 for a great charity that's feeding America. And if you've seen the lines that have been reported at food banks all over the country, I was happy to do it. Hey. By the way, I should announce that uh, John has asked me, uh, he thrashed his voice, and to do... I will be doing companion videos both on Saturday and Sunday to finish uh, it, th those off. And I want to thank everybody for donating to that cause. Uh, Mukbang asks, has Elizabeth, uh, has Elizabeth, boy, this does have alcohol in it. Has Elizabeth seen Lilies of the Field with Sidney Poitier, 1963? I love that movie. Any thoughts? I have not seen that. I haven't either. <gasps> oh. And I love Sidney Poitier. <gasps> Oh. I mean, the same way if I was Asian. Do you have the I'd want to be, I don't have it. I'd want to be Tony Leung. If if I was black, I'd either want to be uh, Mike Coulter, who played Luke Cage, or Sidney Poitier. 
Nice. Yeah, there you go. So, I don't know what that means. I <laughs> fantasize about being multiracial or being other races. Because why not? That's not a bad thing. Uh, yeah, well, I do. Um, uh, Dan Peters sends in a super chat and says, Thanks for this talk from the noir genre, folks. Well, I don't know if I would call the great beauty noir, but we talked about we talked no. about uh, double indemnity. Yes, that was noir. Which is noir, which yeah. is fantastic. That was a great film. Mm. Such a good movie. So, okay, so back to this film. I mean, obviously you thought it was pretentious. You didn't love this movie. I did not love this movie. I felt like it was a remake of La Dolce Vita and it was just an opportunity for him to make beautiful shots, which he did. Well, the film's uh, unbelievable. It's Use so well made. Use beautiful music, which he did, just like La Dolce Vita. Um, and it's basically the same story, but not told as well. Well, but, but, but okay, why do you, when you say that, why wasn't it told as well? I mean, Fellini is a surrealist. I mean, he was. Because, because you don't. I, I didn't particularly like Jep. Okay. I didn't like him, and he didn't change at all. He seemed like the same person from the beginning to the end. You don't think he learned anything? No. I don't think he learned anything. See, I, I felt he did. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I, I, I felt that, that, you know, he realized that by the end of the film, I felt that he was going to change what he was doing. Like, when his friend says... I've, I'm leaving Rome after 30 years. After finally succeeding, like, I got the idea that he put on this monologue or whatever it was we yeah. saw, and it was well regarded. He got a great, right. it got great uh, a response from his younger audience. Right. Like, he had something to say, but even after he did that, he says, I'm leaving Rome. It's ultimately been a disappointment for me. I'm going back to my right. hometown. And you also know that he's... He's going to go back to that woman. He says, like, Jeff's like, you've slept with six women, in, six women in your life. And then he's, he's like, like, no, nope, seven. seven. And Jeff's like, well, that woman you slept with must not have been very beautiful. Right. But he's still going home to that. Like, like yeah. he's, he's going home. And I, I felt that, that Jeff was going to, ch I felt by the end, we don't see it, but I felt he was going to do something different. I certainly hope so, because... Yeah, he wasn't likable. Well, but it, uh, I say I thought he was. I I I thought he was because he was true to himself. No. Well, no, he was because he 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 even says in the movie, "I don't need to." I I say what I think, you know. I guess so. I mean, he did accomplish his goal of being the king of. Parties or right, but but I felt like I felt like like in Betty Blue, and like in La Dolce Vita, and like in this that maybe they're going to put paper to or pen to paper and write, and create again. Maybe, but he only mentions once that he might possibly uh, write again, but then he, it's never brought up again. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he changes or not. And yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't compare it to Betty Blue. Claudius, uh, uh, I love Claudius. I love, I love uh, okay, Una Una Pense. Maybe Jep Gamberdela or Deya. That's Jep, Jep's last name. Was broken by the great beauty. Maybe because his perfect love was not spoiled by reality. But is it a perfect love if it's not real? It was only a perfect love in his mind, and it's easy to have a perfect love when you don't have to uh, have to uh, service that love on on a daily like, basis. It's like Gatsby, like uh, turning Daisy into this like this person that she was not, and then him being super disappointed. Except that Jep doesn't get the chance to be disappointed by his great love. And I don't even think he was obsessed with her the way Gatsby is obsessed with, no, no. with Daisy. Uh, he no, doesn't even really care. I don't even... No, and the only reason he cares is because now she's dead and the husband has mentioned that in her diary she said that she no, loved him. No, no, no. He cares because he's been staring at that ceiling seeing that sea for a lot yeah, longer than the Yeah, but come on. I mean, he fantasizes every once in a while. 
No, it's uh, it's like every night, every time he sits on his bed, he looks up. Yeah, but he gave that up to be the king of Rome. No, he didn't. He didn't give it up. He's he's been fantasizing about it the whole time. He, it, it, I think they exist separately. But he could have easily pursued her, which he did yeah, but, not. Uh, but at the time, he didn't know what he was losing. Only, only in becoming the king of Rome did he understand what he had lost. He never got it. He never understood. Yeah, but you it, never It's like Yoda. Him. It's like Yoda. Never his mind no. on where he was. I don't think he what really. What he was doing. I really don't think he cared because in the end, you don't see him like mourning over this relationship that he lost. But he is mourning over the relationship that he lost. Is he? He sits there. He sits there, and, and it's not like he's he's having sexual fantasies. He's looking at this time, this moment in time, this beautiful sea, and and there's the one scene where he almost gets hit by a boat. You know, they're like, "Jap, Jap, look out!" Yeah, the boats coming. When I he mean, was young, but people were looking out for him. Yeah, but he gave all that up and never looked back. I don't think he meant to, though. It just happened. Mm, I don't think so. All right. I don't think so. Well, do, do you think, like Claudius is saying, Jep was broken by the great beauty? I don't know if he was broken. He didn't seem broken. He seemed... His like... perfect love was not spoiled by reality. See, I mean, a perfect love, it exists in his mind because it didn't have to survive, you know, hey, we need money for the rent. And it didn't, like... It didn't right. survive daily life. I mean, in his mind, he's like, wow, I'm in like, I'm on Ibiza, wherever the hell I am. I don't know where I am. It's just this beautiful moment. And apparently, the first time they had sex was in the rocks, mm -hmm. uh, which was weird. I mean, I, but but whatever. I mean, I just saw it as a metaphor. And, and, and he let her go. He did. He let her go. Well... Anthony Gonzalez sends in a tip and says, enjoying the show tonight with my coffee and Jameson. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. You guys could really shake things up on this show and watch Stir Crazy. Stir Crazy. No, Gene Wilder that. and, and uh, Richard Pryor. Oh. That's pretty funny. I might have seen it. I don't know. See, I, we could, I, I'm grappling with that issue. Should we watch more populist fare? Or is it more fun to watch? Like, I don't know. Like I, We should definitely watch a variety of things and and watch things that people can actually get access to and see or have seen. You can get access to this. Hey, wait. Hang on. It's on Criterion Blu-ray if you don't have it. By the way, Criterion does not sponsor this channel. It probably is on the Criter Criterion channel if you can... I'm excited about the poll. I want to know like what people are choosing for us. I don't. I don't know. I want to know. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm sure the Richard will will figure that out. So. <laughs> yeah. What are we gonna see? And when are we gonna see it? When is well, the we're poll... gonna see it on Monday. I don't know. When is the poll ending? I don't know. All I know is that the mayor of Los Angeles has made Los Angeles County. We are now sheltering at home until May fifteenth, which is my birthday. On your birthday. And this started as a sheltering at home show. Yes. And it's going to continue. Like, it's going to continue. I think it's going to go past the 15th of May. Well, yep. I do. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's where... So we'll continue. I mean, it's not even... What, what's today's date? Today's date is the 10th. The 10th. I mean, we're going for another 35 days sheltering at home. Yeah, and I think it'll be even more than that. Yeah. Mm. 2020, what a year. <laughs> well, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. Yeah, that it is. It is very <laughs> different. It is, it is, it is different. So, like, back to this movie. It won the Academy Award for Best Foreign Film. Yeah, because it's beautiful. No, I think it was profound as well. There's a profundity to this film. But did, didn't anyone notice that he remade La Dolce Vita? But he didn't really remake Yeah, he really kind of did. La Dolce Vita, The Seven Deadly Sins, The Seven Sacraments, okay, The Seven Days still. to God to Create the Universe, all the surrealism. This is the same story. A guy who's a writer. No, I mean, who, I mean. Who only hangs out with rich snobs. 
it feels unfulfilled. There's a weird religious thing. Well, I mean, I, I you know, I, I, it's interesting. I, I didn't think of it that way, but I don't, you're not wrong. Oh, I'm not wrong. Well, I don't say you're wrong. Do I ever sit there and say you're wrong? Sometimes. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't tell you you're wrong. Do I ever tell you you're wrong? I don't know. I have to think about the that. The only thing I say that you're wrong about is that I can't own multiple copies of a movie on <laughs> physical media. I just don't see the point. Oh, uh, there's a point. There's no point. There is a point. There's it's a big point. It's the same movie over and over and over again. No, if there's special features that are different. Can't you just buy the special features by themselves? No. <laughs> no. You can't. That doesn't. That's you not how it works. You probably see them on YouTube. No, you know what? I'd like to think not, seeing as I'm working on a movie, I'm working on special features as we speak. Well, not not this particular moment in time. We're done doing the show. I'm going to upload another special feature. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Wow, what was the alcohol content of this? Uh, I don't know, but this is actually pretty dope wine, I have to say. And look, it's got it's got a foreign language on the back. Enjoy. Is this Greek? Oh. Looks Greek. That does look Greek. I don't know. Look at the back of this label. Maybe better people than I can tell me <laughs> what that says. Uh, this is qu quite a nice drop. I mean, yeah. people might ask us, D you, have you ever had a bad bottle of wine? <laughs> I mean, yes. I've had wine that's gone bad, but... We've had... Yeah. We usually like whatever we drink. There are times, though, it's like, this is really weird. <laughs> And That's keep, true. And we keep drinking it. Yeah, we do. Well, you can't open a bottle. It's like pizza. It's you can't You can't not, like, you know. You can't not eat pizza? Pe well, pizza's like... You would never eat a slice with vegetables on it. All right. Maybe. I don't no, know. No, you wouldn't. You never know. Look, I prefer cheese and meat. You know, vegetables are fine. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I don't know. Um. So anyway, uh. Yes. So back to this movie. Yes. So at the end of the day, the film wins an Academy Award. This director, I'm Paolo, did a wonderful job making this film, and he is somebody that has said he said flat out, um. His first film, by the way, was one of the, the, the first films to play the Tribeca Film Festival oh. in 2003. And and uh, the director of the Tribeca Film Festival called him, and he didn't believe that he was picked. And so, I love this guy. I love Paolo Sorrentino. I love him. I, 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 I love to be him. Well, I, I don't know much about him. I just has have seen this one film. So. Well, so tell me, I mean, tell me. Oh, hang on. Claudius has more <clears throat> to say. Um, Claudius says, Rome, Paris, L.A., and New York are different places to different people. Marcello and Jep represent the elite and the famous who are bored with partying. Meanwhile, there's an upper and lower middle class that gives these cities their life. Yes. Yeah, show me a story about that. That's what everybody thinks. No, that's Middle true. Middle class. Come on. Come on, don't man. Don't you want to be fabulous? Claudius, don't you want to be fabulous? I know. He's right. But I'm just trying to be <laughs> contrarian. The I mean, fabulous are miserable. They're miserable. Yeah, that's what these films are about. Maybe that's They're kind of misery. a cliche. You know, it, it's... it's. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Oh, mukbang. Liz is great. Thank Look, you. they're calling you Liz. Thank you. I love Liz is great. She rebuts <laughs> all your arguments quite well and delights at your passion for film. That's why we're together. Yes. She does. I don't know about uh uh rebuts all my arguments though. <laughs> yes, yes. Salute thank to you. that. Thank I don't you. know about that. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> but no, I mean I think what Claudius was saying was is interesting. I I you know, the, the the funny thing is about the wealthy or the people in both La Dolce Vita and when you have money, you're you're unfettered, you're 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 untethered, actually. You don't have to think about sustenance. 
Like, I think a lot of us spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time, how are we going to pay for rent? Right. How are we going to pay for Zoe and Sophie, like, food? Like, I'm like, I could go with food without a couple, for a couple of days, you know? <laughs> and you're like, my kids can't. Yeah, I got to feed my kids. Yeah, and, and I'm like, well, you know, so it takes them 30 days to pay me or six, it doesn't matter. And you're like, no, it matters. It does matter. Uh, I'm like, uh, Throg. Well, I'll talk talk about that later. But one of one of our uh, an imagination connoisseur uh, came through with some toilet paper for uh, us. Oh yeah, which is good because we're getting dangerously low. <laughs> dangerously. And low. Uh, how many trips to the grocery store that now you have to wait in line and get hand sanitizer? Well, you have to go at eight a.m. to get toilet yeah. paper, and um, we're not morning people, so that's a problem. Well, we could do it if we need to. It's it's not desperate yet. Like I told um, you, we could you know wipe our ass with comic books. Well, anyway. Back to the rich and the middle class. Right. Um, they say the happiest people are the middle class, the ones that make $75,000 a year, as opposed to the very rich who are very miserable. Look, I think anyone has to balance their life. And and I think that the, the, the key to a, a well-lived life is you need... There's multiple components. There are... You need things that you want to do that are outside of... Well, first of all, you need the basics. You need your shelter. You need food. Right. And and you need your family. Right. But I think, look, humans, human existence should not be about sustenance. And so... No, it should So many people in the world barely have that. Right. And I, I, I often think is if, if we got rid of poverty... Uh, imagine what would happen if people could dream. Yeah. If people could dream, they uh, if people did not have to worry about their next meal or where they laid their head yes. or their children, they could dream. And, 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 and dreaming, when I say dreaming, I don't mean going to sleep going... No. I mean dreams that they have. Right. I mean, if people could, could, could have the choice, imagine the kind of planet yes. we could have if everybody was able to to pursue something they wanted to do beyond just subsides right, sustenance because that Sust- takes not su- sustenance if, if you don't have that the basic needs covered then you're not you you can't even think about other well, things well i mean that's why you know european countries the health healthcare americans yeah. we we don't have that can you imagine if we had a country where we had universal healthcare and this is not political I'm talking about the fact that you have been on my case about healthcare and getting insurance and all that, and and yeah. I'm like, you know, because if I have to take you to the hospital, it's going to cost. Right, us. But that's ridiculous. It's no, it shouldn't happen. But we have to worry about that. That gets in the way of dreaming. Anyway, it, yes, yeah, absolutely. I agree. It's true. <laughs> How almost, did we get off on that? I don't know, but I'm almost I'm almost out of I've I've got barely you wanna give me a little bit a little Oh man. What if I have corona? Well I have corona too. Like oh there we go. We have to like Oh there we go. That's that's kind of equal. Alright, that's enough to get to the end of the show. So l- let's get back to this film. I mean ultimately you didn't like this movie, you thought it was pretentious and all you you didn't See, I, I it wasn't I, even an original idea. He totally like ripped off like Dolce Vita. Yeah, but Marcello Mastriani starts out. I mean, Jep is sixty five years old, and the idea that still it's the same story. I'm sorry. I don't think it's entirely. It's totally story. the same story. It's in the same same city. It's the same story. It's all about the beautiful vistas of Rome, and 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 it's about these shallow people who are miserable because they're so shallow. It's the same story. Claudius sends in a tip, and you know, hopefully, he's watching this show with his wife. So, cheers to the two of you. Uh, I am a fan of movies that reflect the beauty in NYC's everyday life, i.e., when Harry met Sally. Oh my God! Love that. I movie. could re- I could recite every line of dialogue. <laughs> Baby Fishmouth. Baby Fishmouth is sweeping the nation. <laughs> okay, never mind. This stupid wagon wheel coffee. No. <laughs> Married. Should Come on, I, man. Should I do the scene in the in the diner? No, 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 no. We don't. No, no. I can do that scene. Uh, I'm. I know you can. <laughs> I know you can. Claudia <laughs> says, "I'm a fan of movies that reflect the beauty in NYC's everyday life, i.e., when Harry met Sally. I did not attend parties at the Met, 
but I've had uh, heroes. I've had heroes on the sidewalk outside the Metropolitan Museum of Art after walking through the exhibits for free, which is amazing. I mean, yeah, the Met is amazing. I mean, Claudius is pointing out something that's that's very interesting. The great beauty in life is everywhere. You know, it's not something that you it have is. to seek. You don't have to look for it. You know, you it's, don't have it's, to be fabulous and go to these no, it's shishi all, parties. It's all around us all the time. Yes. You know, I don't want to be one of these. Oh, life is beautiful, but it is beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, it really. You you have to go choose. You know, one of the things now it's poo pooed, but American Beauty that won the Academy Award. Yes. There's that one moment where the kid is is filming the the the, the bag, bag dancing and the, yes. and and it was like well see there's beauty there and, and now it's considered pretentious and stupid but but we love amelie yes we do you know and the the, the dancing the dancing uh uh tablecloth with yes. the bottles of wine yes you know and and amelie is this 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 thing about how you know, I think our crazy dogs. That there, there are times when they, there's moments when those dogs are 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 beautiful. There's there's and maybe that's what the movie's about then. So the great beauty is around. It surrounds us. It's everywhere. I don't think this film's about that. Well, no, I don't think it's about that. But I think it's also recognizing that, you know, it's ironic when you live in a city like Rome. Where there is timeless, incredible, everywhere you go is sculpture and beauty and all this. That you're you're in a city like Rome and you're lamenting something where where you know a, a key master who can take you into the great museums and right. all that. N none of that matters. All you want to be is fabuloso. Yeah. Gross. Is it gross? Yeah. Or, or, I mean, as human beings, don't we need to be reminded of these things? That we want to be fabulous? No, that, 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 that there is beauty everywhere. Well, yes, there is beauty, beauty everywhere. Maybe the great but beauty is life itself. if you're being the king of Rome, the king of parties... Yeah, but at the end of the day, that led him nowhere. Exactly. He, he wasn't happy. I mean, he you know... He was unhappy. He was unhappy. Yeah. Well... Well, Mukbang sends in a super chat and says, how clean is L.A. versus New York versus Rome? Live chat is going on about city cleanliness. Oh, well, didn't L.A. like... Well, our air, but the city itself. Oh, well... Well, you know, I mean, look, it's... there's a difference. I mean, like, New York is very confined, so garbage pickup and all that. Uh, I was in New York in January... L.A. is incredibly spread out. I've never been yeah. to Rome. I've never been to Rome. I've never been to Rome either. I've been to northern Italy, but I, I've never, never been to southern Rome. Italy. I mean, I, I think... I hear for... it's not clean. I hear it's not very clean. Yeah, well... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'll tell I you, uh, Seattle, my hometown's very clean. I mean, L.A., I wouldn't say L.A. is dirty, no, I no, I wouldn't either. I mean, it, there's not like it's so spread out. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's I a lot of beauty surrounding LA. You think it's a desert and it's a wasteland, but we have beautiful hills and yeah. greenery right around. I mean, I don't think there's like trash piling up all over the in the streets or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is, we live in a desert. It's a it, paved it's desert. It's dusty. Yes, it's it's dusty and hot. But there's not like trash laying around everywhere. Depending on where you are, I mean, our homeless population is obviously a problem. Well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I so, that's interesting. Uh, but and and New York is very different. New York is a very different city than L.A. Very different. Very different. I mean, Culturally and scenery and everything it's very different and rome i haven't been there but city cleanliness i mean you know it, it comes down to the fact that ultimately i think in a way cleanliness is a luxury you know it, it, if if you're if you're poor and and all you're trying to do is feed somebody you put a put a put a roof over their head you know nobody cares if you're using dryer sheets when you wash your clothes right you don't even have that luxury and and I think cleanliness is, is in fact a luxury. We're lucky. I mean, we have hot and cold running water. 
there's continents that don't have that's true what we have that we grew up with i mean it's it's i think cleanliness is also cultural too yeah it is i mean and uh, you know boy this is getting off into a weird (laughs) tangent back i'm back to the movie listen we're over our time already yes we are so okay i'm gonna ask you first of all what what a fantastic chat this has been um for those of you who forgot we're talking about the great beauty the academy award winner at the 86th academy awards 2013's the great beauty directed by paolo sorrentino who makes the young pope the new pope for hbo um and that's what we've been talking about we have to talk on our bottoms up scale bottoms up (laughs) on our bottoms up scale what would you give elizabeth what would you give the great beauty Uh, this is hard I'm Why? supposed to like this film. You're I mean, not supposed to. Do, you're, you're, no, no, no. You're not supposed to do anything. You, you can't say I'm. Why are you supposed to like this movie? You're not supposed to like anything. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it two. Two. Two and a half. Because the scenery was beautiful and the music was good. Yeah, but that okay. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half glasses. Two and a half glasses of wine for the great beauty. I'm going to give it three and a half glasses. I, I like know. this movie. I know a lot. you really like this. I one. like this movie a lot. That's why I want. It. That's why I bought it. <laughs> I own this movie. So, all right. I guess I'm going to finish off my Zinfandel. Who would have thought? Right. Mm. It's actually pretty good. Well, uh, yeah. So there we go. Two and a half for you. Uh, maybe someone will have a chart. We don't have oh, a chart that shows our things. Well, we should. Uh, we're now right up there. We're looking at the camera. Uh, both of us want to thank you for being here. Uh, this will be the end of Whining About Movies, episode number 13, about The Great Beauty, 2013's The Great Beauty. Paolo Sarantino. Did I get that right? Um... We want to thank you all for being here. We want to thank the Post Geek Singularity community. We want to thank everybody that is here supporting the channel, whether it's through Super Chats or whether it's through um, uh, tips. But what we really want is we want participation. Please write us letters. You can write us at thebrunettwork.net. Yes, write us letters. Write us letters. Send videos. Send videos. And if you want us to watch movies or if you think there's movies we should discuss, we're open to that. I want to thank our moderating staff. I want to thank Mike Bodden. I want to thank uh, Detective Jim Boyers. I want to thank, of course, Greg Smith, who was actually the star of the first episode of Rob's Observations. True. And I want to thank the great Lewis Yu and Jordy Lyons for being the great moderating staff that makes the post-geek yeah. singularity a wonderful place to hang out. Yeah, especially Lewis. He does moderate this show. Lewis does moderate this show. So let's hear it for Lewis. Oh, and the Richard. And the oh, well, that's what I was gonna say. There is the Richard. Now the Richard is uh, both dealing with the whining about movies Facebook page, who is going to come up with suggestions. He hosts watch parties. So if you if you haven't gone to the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page or the whining about movies Facebook page, please go there and 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 tell the Richard Elizabeth sent you. Yes, there's a poll. There's, a, what's the poll? To see what movie we should watch, uh, viewers, uh, viewers' choice. Yes, viewers' choice. <laughs> and the Richard will take care of that. So go there, and that that would be great. Go and vote. So we are going to. Uh, we got the weekend off. Yes. We got to watch a movie on Sunday. I've got I've got stuff I have to finish delivering. What movie are we watching? I don't know. Can I pick? Uh, I don't know if you can pick. We'll have to see. You can try. I never get to pick. No, you pick Sound of Music. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, we want everyone to stay safe. Boy, this this wine hit me hard. <laughs> stay safe. Stay safe. Say, stay, stay safe. safe. By the way... If you're one of my tribe, happy Passover. And if you're one of your tribe, 
Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Uh, high holy days, but what's most important is family. Yes. And love. And staying safe. And faith and staying safe. And all of that. <laughs> uh, and so this brings an end to Elizabeth's Whining About the Movies episode number 13. 13. 13. Lucky 13. And so <laughs> what do we say? I forgot. Every person. <laughs> oh, yes. Every person that you meet has a story to tell that you haven't heard. <gasps> You got it right. All you have to do is listen. Oh, my God. A golf clap for Elizabeth. A golf clap for Elizabeth, ladies and gentlemen. That is correct. And uh, now that we're at the end of the stream, and what else do you say? Have a better night. Have a better night. (laughs) Thanks for being here, everyone. We will see you on Monday. Rob Observations will be back tomorrow. And I will be doing a companion video for John Campia's enormously successful telethon. And remember... Rob Observations episode 400 is coming on April 23rd. If you want to send me videos or whatever, I will play them. And with that, well, we're going to go. Good night. (laughs) Yes. And uh, thanks for being here.